their beaton pura on. Be in the bhav, the key of B. Just warm up our voices with sa. Ladies, you, your low saw will be. And guys, if you can work it out, you can get down there. But just sing, sing your range. Hi, Lily. <laughs> Good to see you. So when we do this warm ups, don't worry about your range. Just think about connecting in the sound. Say. We're, we're hearing that B Tanpura and we're entering into the sound and singing in that, in that space, in that womb, we're, we're kind of united with it the sound. chat if you know that's sliding so we're allowing the note to fall gently through the whole arc of sound that's between sa and fa Say, 
as opposed to just some person. That's called mean. Mean. Oh, Mina put it. Yeah, that's because it's mostly her name. Mean. Mina. So, ladies, if you start here. Try to go for around two octaves, two and a half octaves. If B isn't the best key for you, then practice in whatever key you can stretch to that octave to. Sometimes for ladies, it's A. Sometimes it's B flat. Sometimes it's even G. <clears throat> so B is a little bit low for male range, but I'm trying to find the balance. Now, call you on scale. So, ladies, start there. I'm going to start. That's, uh, that's called Uttaranga, the lower, the lower level. You can think of it as the bottom floor. Divra Ma is there for Kalyan scale, right? Divra Ma. Sharp. Sharp fourth. So Uttar, I'm sorry. I misspoke. Purvanga is the lower one. Purvanga. Purvanga means the lower tetrachord. In Western music, we talk about tetrachords of a scale, the bottom half, the top half. So the lower half, that's right. The lower half means, uh, we say purvanga. Anga means a limb, like your arm, your leg uh, in Sanskrit. So purvanga means the lower limb. Uttaranga means the upper limb. And we'll, <clears throat> that's the top half of the scale. So if you, if you think of the different halves of the scale, sometimes it's helpful when you're learning, especially a new scale. When, we'll, and when we start another raga, we'll, we'll learn uh, maybe a scale that has doesn't have a Western equivalent like this one, which is the Lydian mode. So... Sing with the sarangi. Now I'll sing the uttaranga, the, the, the top half. <clears throat> Uh, Purvanga. <laughs> now, when we cross over, we get a special feeling in the raga when we're singing Yemen. Ma. 
Good. So I just wanted to introduce this concept because we haven't talked about it much. We've, we've gone over a lot of the phrases of the Raga, but it's just a handy thing to know that we can, especially when we're practicing, we can focus in one area of the Raga or another. But then there's always the crossover and, and moving between those sections. The, the, it's, it's not ultimately important, but it's just an aid to learning sometimes when you can focus on less notes. You can focus on the, the you know, those four or five note sets. You feel me? So I want to just sing a few phrases and then ask some of the people who are going to uh, sing today to hypnotize us. What's up, Sadama? How you doing, man? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so let's just review how the raga is different from the scale we're singing. Um, it's very important because people, some people think that a raga is a scale. And that's a miss. Nomer. That's kind of a very super superficial uh, assessment that only someone who didn't really know what ragas are would say. Uh, because from a Western perspective, we often think of like, we identify a scale first when we're listening to music and we're trying to figure out what those elements are that make us feel that way. But the scale is just one of many elements. So it's kind of like saying that Alma right here is, is just, who she is is just her bones. Like imagine just like a, like one of those Mexican Day of the Dead Sarangi players, you know, sitting there and all bones, you know. So that would be like the Raga. if didn't take, take any of her characteristics, like she's Filipino, she's crazy, she's uh, wonderful, she's uh, can be pestering, <laughs> all kinds of things that make up who she is, you know? So that is the Raga, the character, the personality behind all these things, you know? So. When we, when we listen to ragas, try to, try to go into some of the deeper things because it's, it's, we don't want to just use these kind of superficial elements to, to describe them, such as the scale. Um, but we use the scale to learn because we need to, number one, just have kind of a, like a, a picture that we can grasp onto in the beginning and we got to start with with these notes and once you get the notes they slowly start to disappear and you and you go more into the music and you embody the music and so the notes just are kind of like floating there in the background as far as what's important is like this mood this feeling this character this essence you know this personality so that's what, that's what we're going for ultimately, you feel me?
Okay. Let's hear from one of our volunteer singers who, who's, I know you all prepared to sing this week, but there was some people who, was it you, Sunita? Yep. What's up, sister? You are unmuted. <laughs> and you have a Tom Pura on, we all do. So let's yeah. hear what Let's hear what you got going on. All right. Can you hear my tempura? What's that? Can you hear my tempura or are you just going to hear yours? Uh, it doesn't matter because we're, we're, as long as you're in B, then we'll all be good. Yeah. All right. Kiabate, beautiful. Okay, a couple, a couple technical things I want to bring to y'all's attention. Um, this program, Zoom, is not really set up for music. So the best thing to do when you have time, especially if, if, if you're in participating and you're singing, is to go into the preferences and the settings and um, go to audio and I'm doing it right now just to make sure I'm telling you right and oh did they change this oh advanced and suppress persistent background noise you have to disable it and suppress intermittent background noise and you disable that because basically it's set up for speech not singing ragas so this helps this will improve the audio of, of how you, uh, and I should actually put this in, in some notes for the future. I'll, I'll try to make a mental note to do that. Because if, if you go up to Zoom, preferences, audio, advanced, you can disable these weird audio filters that are meant for people talking like this, because, because what they do is they cut off the sound when it gets uh, to a certain lower level. So it's not good for dynamic music. And when we're singing like, ah, ah, and it starts to get softer, we basically stop hearing you. So this will help. Uh, but I can mainly hear you. Uh, like I could hear about 90% of that. And, and I could definitely tell you, you, you worked on this and it sounded good. It was in tune. Um, the only feedback I would advise is try to, try to be aware when you're bringing almost like a little bit of a Western vibrato into it. Like, Mada pa. For, for Western trained singers, it's very, very natural and automatic. For, and instrumentalists too, of course, uh, cl especially classically trained Western in, uh, instrumentalists to add that, ba, that vibrato. Sometimes, you know, it's not like it's a gospel singer with these huge vibrato, but it's, it's there. And um, be, because the Indian ornaments are so different and precise. That, uh, to my ear, it sounds a little bit like you're singing with an accent. So it's one thing to be aware of and try to go for very still pure notes. And that, because then when you do these slides in the means, there's, there's a really dramatic contrast. And later when you get more advanced in this music, we learn other kinds of ornaments, which like Andolan, which is a very slow vibrato like technique where we get into very kind of like deep moody things in the ragas and um, th these are brought out by these kinds of vibrato like techniques but 
but they can't be attained through like modifying your Western vibrato. They have to kind of be learned from the from the ground up. But in general, that was great. Thanks, Sunita. Thanks. I appreciate the feedback. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Great job. All right, who was, uh, was it Amita, you, Amitra? Are you gonna sing? Oops. Yeah, hi, yeah, hi, Paul. Uh, all right, cool. Do you hear me? Yes, well, I, do. I hear you great. Okay. Uh, so just start if, I mean, just do some, some uh, a love and for a few seconds. Yeah, whatever, whatever you've been practicing, and 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 uh, you know, in the in the phrases of the raga, that's that that that's the point. Okay. tell that you have number one some experience with this music and that you definitely listen to vocal music yeah I try to listen to you. yeah and that's 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 very important because um, uh, at least in the West I think a lot of people uh, have been oops have been exposed to Indian ragas South Indian ragas mainly through instrumental music <clears throat> And the vocal uh, music is a little bit more of a smaller audience in the West, not so much in India, of course. Uh, but it's so it's a little bit harder for us to get into it because of, number one, the language barrier, uh, the the very different way that the music is is performed vocally uh, from Western vocal music. So I can I can I could immediately sense that you you know that you've been into this for some time you know that you you're you're a, a listener so that has that has made it uh, impact it and and the phrases were were good uh, the one thing that 
the the phrase Sapa Ma. Is that a phrase you've heard singers sing before in this raga? Yeah, so in ghazals, those are based on Yaman. Yes. It's pretty much used. Oh, I mean, I have heard it yeah, yeah. a few times. Yeah, cool. And I personally like that phrase, so I use it. Yeah. That. Yeah, so so just 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 so that you others know, uh ghazal is a uh a vocal uh, form of music and you you may be able to explain this better and feel free, but it's it's uh Urdu poetry. So Urdu is the uh the language which is like Hindi, but is more uh, connected to the Islamic roots, and it uses uh, um, Arabic script, and it's very popular for all over India, Pakistan, and all over the world, but it's a light classical form. So in, in these forms, the light classical forms, and there are many, Ghazal is just one of the many vocal styles of light classical, you can take more liberties in the raga. So um, it's not so much that the songs are based off the ragas, but it's not so much pure, uh, like pure classical raga music. But that's that's very nice. I, re I really like what you did. Be careful sometimes with your ga. Ga. There's a few of the phrases that just got a little bit sharp got a little bit on the high on the high end so with time you'll I'm sure you'll hear that better but what I really appreciated is the the feeling that you were bringing to the music because um, that really can't be taught you know yeah you you have to really absorb yourself in the music uh, to get that feeling of the raga you know and and it's it's a matter of really listening to many masters and 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 absorbing the uh, the way that the that the music comes and 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 I appreciate that you also pretty much kind of improvised that didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Well, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Yeah. Does anybody else want to give it a shot, or we can pick a few? Uh, Oh, Mike? Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we'll finish with Mike today. And next week, I'd love to have a couple more of you uh, participate in this part of it. Here you go, Mike. Okay. Oh, this is scary. All yeah. right. <clears throat> I always say that uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this class is to expose my myself. And it's a... Uh, it's a it's a great way. Singing is like being naked in front of people. It's it's it is scary, but the the more you can do it, the less you feel uh, self conscious, and you can just really get into the into the feeling of it. You know the point of it. You know. So go ahead and hypnotize us, Mike. <laughs> I think I think you may also be having that mic issue because what I hear is, uh, uh, is uh, are you guys hearing that cut off too of his voice? Yeah. So if you go into the settings, like where I, are those settings? I don't didn't see them. Uh, preferences. You have to go to preferences. 
in the upper left hand corner if you have a Mac and then down to audio and then advanced in the bottom right hand corner of that setting so and then you'll see disable intermittent noise that should help uh, but that was good man I, I could hear clearly the phrases and the notes of the of the raga and I want to just share that that definitely feels like you uh, you work some of that out and you and even some of the little uh, improvisations that you did and the little little tons uh, that was all cool the, the thing I'd like you to work on is is like I was telling Sunita with the vibrato it sounds like you, you have a, a kind of a fast vibrato on some of the notes mm. So, tr so work on on just doing long tones like because sometimes you're like you hear the difference mm -hmm. I didn't hear myself doing it but yeah yeah so so Try to really find. Think of your think of your note as like this laser beam. It's just going straight. It's it's not waving back and forth. It's. And I think I'm not a, I'm not like a professional singer. And others who who have more experience singing, I'd like to hear what you think. I think it has to do with your breathing. Breathing. How well you breathe. Because when, when when your breath is really under control, you can hold the notes with a certain amount of stillness. God. I don't have enough breath. I'm mean, gonna So there's no control there, you know. God. It, so it's kind of like. Think about really getting deep breath and, and, and really holding those notes. But great job, Mike. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So, does anybody, real quick, uh, well, I'd like to know who wants to sing next week. And what I'd like to do is just keep it to two people per week so we have, so we have uh, plenty of time to learn new things. So, who wants to volunteer? Um, for next week. Sebastian? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, cool. So you're gonna sing next week? Sure, yeah. Okay, cool. Who else? Anyone else? What about uh, Josh? Josh has a new Tanpura. Yeah, I just put it in chat. I'll do it. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, awesome. All right, so that there's our two for next week, and then I want, like I said last week, practice as if you're going to sing next week. No flojeros out there, no lazy bums. We're all gonna do this, okay? Because it's good. Singing is good for your health, and and putting yourself out there is good for your ego, you know. I mean, in a way that like, you don't need to be attached that kind of way, you know? Not like, I'm so great. Okay. And then, so practice as if you're gonna do it next week. There you go. We're gonna add you, Mina. <laughs> All right, so let's do some rhythms. Are you, are you all down? Or let's 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 do this one. Let's do one more round of singing, and I'm just gonna do some faster phrases, because we've been singing this raga now for some time, and let's do a couple more things, and then I'll sing it, and then you y'all sing with the sarangi, okay? See. <laughs> Gama gama gare gare sa. Ga gama dani 
Let me simplify. Madani Sani Dani Dapa. Mani Dani Dama. So check out this. It's a cluster on pa and a cluster on sa. Bama da bama ba. Then the connecting party. Riga re sa ni re sa. Ni re ga ma da ni sa. Ni re ga ma ba ma ga re sa. Like Amitabha was doing with Akar. Ah, 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 Akar, just no sargams. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, 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 ah. Akar is a little more advanced because we're hearing the notes in pure sound form as opposed to like the solfege, the sargam. So that's telling us these are the notes, these are the notes, these are the notes. But in Akar, it's pure sound, so we have to hear the notes fully. So at the same time that we're getting the feeling, we're understanding the notes, even though we're not vocalizing the names of the notes. You feel me? Yeah? Does that make sense? So that's called akar. Akar. Put your ah in a car and let it go. Ah. really want to learn Akar and Hindustani singing, find an Indian singer, a proper singer. This class is just about introducing you to this work, okay? Army's pointing at me, I don't know why. <laughs> okay, so now, the chickens? Oh. Will you stop distracting me? Okay, so let's do the uh, let's do some rhythms. Thank you, Alma. Oh, you're welcome. I'm mean, still trying to tell us something. What? Oh, does anyone have any questions about this raga stuff first? No. I was wondering if you could uh, name the singers to listen to. I'm sorry. Who is this? It's Sunita. Hi. Oh, hi, Sunita. What What did you say? Um, can you mention some singers that we can listen to or people? Oh, sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, did we talk about Rashid Khan? This is one of the... Yeah, Kishori Mankar, for sure. Uh, Rashid... So Kishori Ji, female singer, and Rashid Khan is a male singer. My favorite singer... Uh, well, Bimson Joshi was one of the greatest male singers. Yeah. Uh, I'm just putting these names down in case you have trouble spelling them. I mean, Taba, you should put some, you should put some of your favorite singers too. Uh, there's so many. Uh, let's see. My favorite Kyal singer is Kumar Gandharva. 
not seeing any of your typing problems. Oh, shoot. Okay. I see what happened. I'm not doing it to everyone. My bad. Pundit Josh, of course, yeah. Uh, everyone. These are some of my favorite singers. These are all male singers, but um, Kishori Mankar. I'm not super familiar with Swanish. I've heard of them. So um, there's there's really a lot. But those are kind of like three that I would definitely recommend. And there's so many recordings of Yemen, so. Um, yeah. I'll put together a more extensive list, if you remind me, of singers that I, I, I really love, both male and female. Cool. So let's, uh, let's do some rhythms. Thank you, dear. All right, so let's put, um, let's review some of the jatis, the subdivisions. Yeah. And then I want to review some of the uh, polyrhythms today, too. Let's start at 80 BPM, okay? So you, you should be able to hear this. Can everyone hear that? Da, 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 da. So we're stepping with this. So that's one to four. I'm sure, I'm sure everyone's mastered this by now. Now, how do we get into the fives? This is where things get trickier. We want to put a two and a three together in that one beat. I don't see y'all moving. All of a sudden, everyone's gotten so lazy. I know how to do this. So each of these jatis has a feeling to it itself. The five has a very different feeling than the four. It's not just because it's faster. Obviously, it's more notes in the same amount of space, but that's not what makes it feel different, I think. It's like five in one. Have you ever seen have you ever seen like uh, flowers that have five petals centered around one thing? So this it's 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 a pen pentamerous nature that this is actually in nature these ideas these fives are in nature they're in flowers they're in snowflakes they're in all kind of stuff so that has a certain feeling to it Tinta. And the interesting thing about the harmonic series is the fifth harmonic gives us the pure third. So that is another example in physics and in nature of a five over one polyrhythm. 
when you actually speed up those polyrhythms, you get this interval of that third. So this is all over the universe, these five and one ratios. And we can tap into it in this, in this way with the polyrhythms by really feeling what five and one feels like. Now, another thing we can do at some point is is five over two. So, and in this tempo, this tempo we basically have to split that fast five in half to do five and two over two. So it's something I want to, I want to think about for next time, uh, for next week. And I have, I'm preparing a new sheet of, of more advanced polyrhythms, but first I want to finish going through the jatis and these subdivisions and review the basic polyrhythms. Five over two is a little bit more of a challenging, uh, intermediate or advanced polyrhythm. So, but the first thing we need to do is, is be able to feel the pulse and, and the subdivisions. So now let's go to six. So half dinaka takita 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 if there's anyone new I, I think i saw someone new kip are you new um john no i've been here okay. since the beginning yeah, you've been here before sorry about that i didn't see <laughs> your face good. so uh oh i am lily Yes, you are, Lily. I mean, you're not new, but, but I'm, so new. I'm really happy you're here. <laughs> yeah. So just so you know, um, and, and just as a reminder to everyone, all of these, uh, I call them bowls, because in North India, they're called bowls. In South India, they're, it's called konaka. Uh, all of these are written down in the the document um, that can be accessed from the Google Drive. So I'm just gonna repost that here in case anybody's missed that, okay? Let me, oh man, why didn't this? This thing is stuck on, oh, everyone a meeting, my bad. There. So that Google Drive has links to all the download files. So now I'm going to slow down the tempo a little bit because I want to make sure we can do these higher subdivisions um, without getting all tongue twisted up. So this is 75 now, just a little bit slower. So we stopped at six. Sometimes what I do instead of filling up every six pulses, I'll split it up like din And you can change the balls too. Instead of a full six. You can do two threes. And the other thing they do in Carnatic music a lot is they kind of melodicize the rhythm. So instead of like being like a monotonous robotic, they'll actually melodicize it. That's the only word I can think of it like. So that can make it more fun and interesting and 
play with it like a child. You gotta be like a child get in the kingdom of heaven. You know, you know that? Do it, yeah. But, there's a reason why we play music. We don't work music. You gotta play around with this stuff. Are you with me? Play with it. Now seven. Taki ta taki demi. Taki ta taki demi. Taki ta taki demi. Taki ta taki demi. Three and four. Taki ta taki demi. 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 Ta. That ta is always on the beat there. I'm gonna slow it down even more. Let's try seventy. Taki ta taki demi. That's our phrase. You could also reverse it. Taka dimi takita. Taka dimi takita. Or you could put a three in the middle. Taka takita taka. Taka takita taka. So once you get to these, uh, these uh, you can think of them as composites, like two, three is five, or three, two is five, or three, four, or four, three is seven, or two, three, two is seven. Think of all the possibilities and work them out because that's just going to make you better. And and it'll make your, the music more interesting because you won't just be doing the same accents all the time. Well, it's dragging a little bit. So that's three, four. What if we did four, three? What would happen if we did three, four, four, three? Taki the taka demi taka demi taki the taka di taka demi taka demi taki the taki the taka demi taka demi taki the ta. Then it be it feels like a fourteen now, right? Because we're changing the accents on the next bar. Takita taka demi taka demi takita. You know, it's like it's more variety. It's more interesting. Taka demi takita 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 taka Short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long. That's one, one way to think of it. Quarters and dotted quarters. Then we're saying less notes, but we're feeling the same accents. Right? Is that kind of understandable? They're the same accents. Say we just do three, four. Taki the taka demi, taki the taka demi, taki the taka demi, one to the one to the one, taki the taka demi, taki the taka demi, taki the taka demi, taki. Now I'm just gonna drop out some of those pulses. Ta ta din, taki the ta din, ta ta din, tonga, ta din, tonga. So instead of taki ta, I'll say tonga. Tonga ta din, tonga ta din, tonga ta din, tonga ta din, taki the taka demi, taki the taka demi. It has the same accenting flow. But you're not filling in all the pulses. There's seven pulses per beat. Taki the taka demi, 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 tanga ta, din tanga ta, din ta, tanga ta, din tanga ta, din ta, tonga ta, tonga ta, tonga ta, tonga ta. So I made you three, two, two, or three, four, and leave space. Space is the place. Space is so important. Can you imagine a music with no space? Yuck. It, would, it wouldn't work. We, we'd, we'd be like, we'd have a heart attack listening to it. You know? You gotta have space. So sometimes when you're doing all this, you're like, ah, I need to say, so this is what's really cool about the rhythm is you can create a theme based on these accents and then play with them. Did I tell you you got to play music? Stop working on it. Just play. 
you know, if you if you can't play, what? Why are you doing it? You know, is I mean, that's why I want to be a musician. I just play, just play, just play around. But take time to do it in a disciplined way. Then your play becomes more fun. It becomes more to it, more depth. You know, it's like you want to speak a language with 50 or 100 words. You want to speak a language with a vocabulary of like two or 3,000 words or 5,000 words. If you're, you know, that's what we're talking about. Music has this unlimited vocabulary. And the more we add to it, the more tools we have for hypnotizing people and hypnotizing ourselves. So, what do y'all want to finish with? Some of the polyrhythms? Who's got a question? Oh man, John Villalobos, he's double dipping. I see him twice on here. He's trying to catch up that way, I think. Sebastian, I see you, you playing a Kanjira over there? Yeah. Cool. Cool. I got this thing, it's like 30 bucks on Amazon. It's great. All right. <laughs> the guitar case, love it. Cool. Do anybody have any questions about these rhythms? Are me, your dog has a question. Anyone else? Okay, so I'm just gonna jump in to review some of the polyrhythms. Oh, uh, Sudama, do you have a question or are you just scratching? You good? Okay. All right, so. Yeah, I'm good, yeah. Okay, awesome. So one of the, who remembers this? basic polyrhythm sheet. I'm going to share my screen real quick. Can you, can y'all see that? Someone just say yes. 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 All right. Yes. So <clears throat> this is, this is one of the documents that we've gone over. And if this is easy for you now, bear with us, but I want to make sure that people really get this because this is a really useful style of rhythmic notation, um, which you don't need to have any experience with Western music to read because each block represents a pulse in time. So, and basically the L's are your left hand and the R's are your right hand. So that first one, three over two, we're doing the three in our left hand and the two in our right hand. Boom, ba, da, dong. And so we can think of it in three, one, two, three, one, two, or two, one, two, one, two, or six, counting double speed, which is the next variation. Da, da, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. So going through and counting while you do this rhythm, da. Da ding da 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 ding da da. One two three four five six. One two three four five six. That's all the pulses. You can't add any more pulses into that without changing the the, the fundamental identity of the rhythm. Okay, it's down to it's down to its you know lowest common denominator, or whatever. Then when you when you count three, you're just counting your left hand. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and the and is coming here in the right. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Now counting the right is a little harder because you have to make sure you don't count that second beat of your left hand. Then it's like one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. One, two. One, two, three, one, two. Now, three over two variations. We're gonna do double in the right hand. Din, da, ka, din, ka, da, 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 da,
one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So I'm doubling RR, you see that one? And then I'm still doing the three in the left hand. So, ding, ta. It's a little trickier. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one. So then, you can, but you can still count three in your left and two in your right. It's just that the two in your right is one, two, one, two, one, two. Then you add one, two, one, two, one, two. That's a little harder. Now, the, the next variation, the, the doubling switches from the right to the left side. Do you see that? So, daka dinka daka daka. Taka dinka daka. Taka dinka daka. Taka dinka daka. Daka dinka daka. Daka dinka daka. Daka dinka So go through these slowly. And, and what you want to do is put your mind's eye on the right hand, put it on the left hand. And if you're, and if you're getting all messed up, just do one at a time. Like right hand. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Then the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Then you put it together. Daka, dinka, daka, daka, dinka, daka, dinka. Okay, so if you're not, if that's like, oh shit, that's really hard, go back to the top, do the top ones again. These are basically going in order of difficulty, but th this, the top one is very universal in all kind of music from all around the world. And then these other variations just add, are adding levels of complexity. But you basic, we're basically still feeling the same fundamental rhythm. We're just adding different accents and, and beats to them. Now let's look up four over three. So uh, this, is, this is a little more complex because we now have 12 pulses. Because four times three is 12. So you can't make it any simpler than 12. But then you're including all of the, all of the possible parts, okay? so. In the left hand, we're in three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four. That's the four. The right hand is the three. Because it's taka dimmi, taka dimmi, taka dimmi. One, two, and three ka dimmi. Waka dimmi, taka dimmi, taka dimmi. So we have this slower rhythm while the four is going at a faster rhythm. Taki ta, taki ta, taki ta. And then lining them up. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. Now I'm stepping in three. Three, one, ba, boom, ka, one, ba, boom, da. So when we step in three, the one's gonna shift every cycle from your right foot to your left foot, or vice versa. Right? One, two, three. Now left, right, left, right, left, right. Because that is the three part, the, the right hand. So if you do it with your right hand and your feet, it'll be even a better exercise. And then count. Two, three, one, two, three. Now left hand. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Wait, I messed up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. That's it. So, then there's a variation on that, where you double the right hand. One, two, three, four. 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 One. But let's stick with the simple four of a three. 
Unless someone can already do it, show me. All right, then we'll practice it and leave it here for now. Maybe maybe there's one person who can who can do the polyrhythms next week too. That would be cool. Anybody want to volunteer? I know Army does. Oh man, she put up the dog picture. That means she may be cooking already. <laughs> All right, you guys. Great job. Hope to see you next week. And go to the link and uh, tell a friend. All right, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep going, keep the flow mojo growing. All right, love you guys. Peace out. Did you you have do you have your original sound on on Paul? Oh, good question. Where is that? That's one of the original things. That, that has to be on in order to uncompress as far as I know. So it will ask you that when you first go into preference <clears throat> when you first go into preferences, I believe, it will say original sound on or off and you want it on. Because when you were backing away, I would I don't know if it was, might have been my internet reception, but you were getting clipped. And oh. so you might still have some compression on your mic. From see because I have in my upper left it says Turn off original sound. It's right up next to the live yeah, I've seen YouTube. It. Um, what does yours say right now? Oh, it says turn on original sound. Yeah, yeah, turn that on. You're going to have much better sound as a result. Are you That's sure? what's making it clip, I think. Cause, All right, I'm going to test that. Thanks. Well, for yeah, yeah, test it. Yeah, I, I went through this whole rigmarole with someone once, and that's that's like the secret sauce. Okay, cool. All right, thank you, Sidella. <laughs> Right on, bro. Awesome class. All right. We'll see you next week. If anyone wants to do a lesson, hit me up. And uh, otherwise, all the links are there. And have a great week. Bless. Bye. Namaste, G. Namaste. It's Paul. All right. Come on, Paul. Sure.